It's raining men. Hallelujah, it's raining men. No, it's not. It's raining Z coin. It's so much better. Hey, what are you doing? Mining. Mining what? Mind your own business. So today we'll be talking about exactly that. Mind your own business. Hey everybody, I'm Joyce and I'm back here with episode 2. Before we start on the topic of mining, um, I really just want to talk about where cryptocurrency actually comes from. So the ones that we are familiar with, we have cryptocurrency that we often buy or sell, kind of like stock, or you have cryptocurrency that you get from mining. Cryptocurrency, unlike money, is not supposed to have a centralized governing system. So that means there's no one person or one body or a bank that's controlling you. The nature of cryptocurrency is basically e-money. So it's money on the internet. So if I take this e-money, send it to your email, and now you have one e-money. So what happens if, let's say, I want to send everyone watching this video one e-money each? just because I'm feeling kind of generous. Then e-money will have no value because no one's keeping track of it. This is why cryptocurrency has that thing called blockchain, so public digital ledger. It's kind of like that online account system that's keeping everyone in check, kind of like an e-wallet. If I'm gonna send you an e-money, the transaction will be recorded online. The transactions that are made online then cannot be changed, so you can't cheat. The computers and units that maintain this ledger are called nodes. So the nodes keep all the transactions in check. So all these transactions are kept in this thing called a temporary pool. Kind of like a swimming pool, but it's temporary, but only for transactions. The computers then need to solve a mathematical puzzle. The first computer to solve the math problem that pulls all the transactions from the temporary pool into a block you get a block reward. So basically you get paid coins. So remember how there's tons of transactions happening constantly? So when you create tons of little blocks, they actually get linked together. I don't have another block, so this will do. We're gonna squeeze another block until this block does. So then, how does mining and blockchains linked to each other. It's kind of like the system that, pre that verifies your information. So the blockchain is legit. What happens with mining is that you put in electricity power and computing power. In return for using computing power and your electricity power for securing the network, you get a block reward and you also get transaction fees. So it's kachi kachi. Everyone that has a computer will get to participate in the mining for an equal share. Sounds ideal, doesn't it? But with the invention of better technologies, a lot of miners have gone from normal computers to graphic cards and now to machines called ASIC. Application Specific Integrated Circuit. And basically, they're designed to mine. Once they created the ASICs, they wouldn't want to sell it to you. I mean, why? Because now they have a machine that can mine so much faster and at such a greater power than everyone. They're going to keep it for themselves and they're going to mine so they're going to get super rich while all of us small fries don't get to participate in mining anymore because we can produce even a tenth of their power. So the better the technology, the more power they have to mine. This makes it super inaccessible to the public because we don't have the means to afford expensive machinery to mine. MTP Multi-talented person Kidding Merkle Tree Proof Like Bitcoin's mining algorithm, it is a proof of work system. And when I say work here, work represents the computing power, not Rihanna's work, work. Work, work, work. MTP or Merkle Tree Proof is a very different proof of work system from other cryptocurrencies because it is very memory hard. What that actually means is that it requires a large amount of memory to solve the puzzles. So memory here is like the RAM sticks that we have in our computers. These RAM sticks cannot be optimized anymore 
because they are already as optimized as optimized can be. The implementation of the Merkle tree proof system that is so memory heavy cannot be computer optimized. So that means there is no ASICs that can be designed to cheat the system. All the machines are limited by memory speed and bandwidth. So again, we're back to a fair ground. With mining, there are two parties, miners and verifiers. So you have your miners and you have your verifiers. In a lot of memory hard proof of work systems, both the miners and the verifiers have to work equally hard. So let's say you're using 100 gigabyte worth of memory to mine, you will need 100 gigabyte of memory to verify. That makes the entire process really slow. But with the Merkle tree proof of work system, you only need a fraction of the miners memory to verify the transaction. That makes sure the transaction happens quickly. Another important benefit of requiring a large amount of memory is that botnets and computers affected by viruses are less likely to be able to mine without being noticed because users will realize the slowdown in the computers when such a large amount of memory is being used. The implementation of MTP, Merkle Tree Proof, is super vital in Zcoin because this prevents the occurring problem of Bitcoin where a small group of people with access to mining machinery have lots of power. MTP will result in egalitarian computing. That means no one is of an advantage or disadvantage. Promoting a truly decentralized system. A working prototype of MTP is already available for Zcoin. However, they are currently working on an updated version with important security and performance improvements, which they are scheduled to launch next year.